Today we're gonna make a map. <laughs> That's all. When it comes to navigation, I am very simplistic with it. I think if you can shoot a bearing, I think if you understand how to just read a map and can tell distance, I think you're golden. But if you wanna take your navigation to a new level and you really wanna apply it to what we do as woodsmen, um, self-mapping, something known as the Paul Method, is definitely a worthwhile thing to understand and know how to do. Plus, it's super fun. I have a great time with it. I think it's, it's awesome. I do. So when it comes to self-mapping, it is you're building a map of an area. I like to tell individuals, this is all about exploring and having a good time doing this. So first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get out your notebook and you want to write these headers in this order across the top of a notebook piece of paper. So you're gonna to wanna to set up your page as a trail log, bearing, distance, and notes. Okay, now this is where all the excitement happens. You have those headings. You don't need anything else. All you need is some imagination, literally, because this is all about, just think you're an explorer out in the woods and you're having a good time. You're going to find out what's around. It's a little bit dull when you first start because you're thinking, I know right around camp, but once you get going, it gets a little bit better, trust me. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna look around and decide where I wanna go. Now, you normally know this, of course, what direction you wanna travel and what you wanna go explore for the day. So in my case, I know I wanna go in this general area because I don't know much of what is out there. So I'm gonna look down this area and I'm gonna decide where exactly I wanna go. Now, this is where it becomes super, super important and people mess this up all the time. We utilize something called waypoint markers. Now what a waypoint marker is, is a marking point of where I currently am. This is going to give us the availability to go and walk around without losing our spot. So although I know where this spot is, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my bright bandana, I'm gonna hang it or place it somewhere so I can see it, so I can get back to this area. Most ideally, we'd wanna use some type of tree and not on the ground because if we lose track of this, we can be lost. So because this is my very first point, I'm gonna just take a couple steps up because I can still see the classroom. I'm gonna start right here. I'm gonna hang my waypoint marker or my cool coal cracker, bushcraft waypoint marker right here on this tree because I know I wanna travel in this direction. Now what I can do is not worry about anything but going out and seeing what is in the area. As long as I can see this, I'm allowed out there. We're gonna use that as a rule. Okay, so I scouted out that area, explored a little bit. I went in this direction, that direction. And what I realized was path of least resistance is that there is somewhat of a trail that kicks up when I get further down there. So now I have two choices. I can either bus brush through here or I can take this road down to another marker. So I took a secondary waypoint flag and hung it down there. And this is just because I'm by myself. I need a point to be able to walk to. So at this point now, I'm gonna take out my compass and I'm gonna shoot the bearing from my current location down to that waypoint marker. A Little hard to see in the camera, but I think you get the point. Now I shot my bearing 120 degrees is directly to that flag. So what I'm gonna do in my logbook is write 120 degrees and I'm gonna begin to walk. Now why I don't wanna bust brush if I don't have to is because I want an accurate pace count. So as I walk to that, I'm gonna count my paces and then I'm going to log that into my book. Okay. Now I arrived at my next waypoint marker. So from this point, if I'm not going to stay on that same bearing of 120 degrees, I need to decide where am I gonna go. So now again, I'm allowed from this point to explore anywhere. As long as I can see this, I'm allowed there. So I'm gonna start to walk around and decide exactly where I wanna go. So at this point now, I found a next direction of travel that I wanna go in. So from this waypoint marker, I'm going to shoot my bearing and I'm gonna count my paces to my next point. So now I found out from this point, after walking around a little bit, what direction I wanna go. I'm gonna shoot another bearing. 
in a direction that I want to travel. I'm going to count my paces in that direction until I get to my next stop point where I put my next waypoint marker. Now I would continue this process along exploring, traveling. You can go in any direction you want. It's just important that you keep track of not only the direction you're traveling, but the distance. And then in that notes column, if you would come across something that you think is important, let's say at 50 meters on the eighth leg, you find a nice grove of tulip poplar. You can jot that down with your marking of how far away that was from the last point. And then when you create your map later on, you can put that on your map. So it's important to try to be as detailed as possible. You also don't want to make very small jumps because it just becomes a little bit of a nightmare later on when creating your ground map to have all these small little points that are 10 or 15 meters. Try to always make your jumps at least 50 meters, if not 100 meters in length. It's just going to make your map flow that much more and you should for the most part be able to walk at least 100 meters from waypoint to waypoint marker without getting too lost or without it being too thick. Okay, so at this point now I am so far out that it, I'm like it's time to get back but rather than retracing all my steps with reverse azimuths I can make a quick map on the ground and find out exactly how to get back to where I started. So what we're gonna do is, if again, if you look at my trail log and the numbers we came up with, this would have been a representation of how I traveled. So we can start anywhere. I'm just gonna start right here. I'm gonna put a peg in the ground. Now you can use sticks. One thing you don't wanna use is nails because nails of course are magnetic to our compass. So if we look at our trail log, what we have going on here is the first bearing was 120 degrees. So we're going to set our compass to that. And then we are going to lay our compass on the ground and we are going to put the needle in the doghouse. Very, very simple stuff, just like that. Now at this point, what I personally like to do is I will take a piece of string and place it over my marker. Okay. Now, I know that the front of the compass is pointing this way, so that was my direction of travel. That is very important. If I put it this way, okay, that's not gonna work. The front of the compass always needs to point in your direction of travel. So we're gonna put the needle in the doghouse, and then we're going to have to decide what our measurement markers are. So I traveled 60 meters on my first leg. So in my case, I have my ax marked here with one inch increments. So every inch, I'm going to assume is 25 meters. Now you can also use a notebook. I have my notebook also marked right here that we have 100 meters is half a notebook. Your measurement system can be anything you want. You just have to make sure you write that down. So we're going to just go with the ax for these purposes, 25 meters per inch. So for 60 meters, we're going to set down our ax right here and we're going to go one which is 25, two, which is 50, and a little bit. So I wanna just make sure when I pull that string tight, my compass is lined up. So we're gonna pull it just like that. All right, so needles in the doghouse at 120 degrees. Now I'm gonna count my distance right here. So I'm gonna just line up my ax. So again, we'll do this one more time. 25, 50, plus a little bit. Now, depending on the size of your sticks, is of course going to matter because this is a little bit wide. So if they were a little bit thinner, all the better, but this will get the job done the way it is. So I'm just gonna loop that around once or twice. So that is my first leg. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna continue along. So my second leg was 160 degrees. I'm gonna dial that my compass. I'm gonna lay my compass down and I'm gonna put the needle in the doghouse. Okay, so I know my direction of travel. I'm gonna pull my string tight. I'm gonna make sure it's all lined up. And now I need to measure. So I'm gonna bring my ax back in. Now I went 200 meters. So at this point, now I have to go 25, 50, 75, 100, 125, 150, 175, 200. Mark it and wrap my string around there. Okay, you wanna make sure that when your string is tied, it's nice and tight like that, okay? So I'm gonna continue this process now. My next step was 260 degrees. So I dial 260 in my compass, needle in the doghouse, direction of travel. Again, we're gonna look at the compass, we're gonna look at our measuring device, I'm sorry, and we are going to go another 50 meters. So this time I'm gonna pull this string, same way, nice and tight. Make sure it's lined up, needle in the doghouse. 
So my string is lined up. Now, 50 meters, I could bring in my measuring device yet again. Now I can say, okay, 2550. So another short jump, I can push that down into the ground, move my measuring device away, and tighten that down. All right, so we're moving along. Next leg, 310. So again, I'm gonna dial 310 to the top of my compass, needle in the doghouse. All right, I'm getting close. All right, now that time I went 200 meters again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my string out, keep my needle in the doghouse, and I'm gonna start to stretch this out. I can move my compass now because I know that this string is on that bearing. I can move that away. I can move in my measuring device. Get that as close to accurate as I can. Okay, so 50, 100, 150, 200. Mark it. And wrap my string. Okay, so for our demonstration, this was as far as I went. This is my current location now. Okay, so we started here, we traveled all of those areas. So now what I can do is I can find where I'm at back to my starting point very quickly. We're gonna take our string and we are going to run it up to our starting point. I'm gonna put my compass between those points, okay? Again, direction of travel is to the front of the compass. And then I'm gonna dial it that the needle is again in the doghouse. And we are at 40 degrees, okay? But we can make it even better. So I can slide this away, I could slide this in, and I can tell you right now that if we travel 100 and about 60 meters at 40 degrees, we will be back at base camp. So we can find our exact location back. Same goes from any other point. I know I'm here now. If I needed to travel back to this point or back to my second point, wherever I need to travel, I can simply just take my rope from this point to whatever point, measure that angle with my compass, okay? So I can measure this to here, measure that string. I can get my distance and my bearing. So very quickly with just our notes and our exploring, we can find out where we're currently at and what direction and the distance back to our camp. Now we do this at our navigation clinics and students have a very good time with this and the majority of the time, students are super close when we go back to that initial starting point. Actually, the last navigation class we had, one group was only about two foot off and about 10 meters off. So very, very close. Now, how you utilize this back at camp would be very simply to, again, build this map on the ground. The thing is everybody in camp needs to know what that measurement device is. So in our case, it was one inch increments equal 25 meters. So that might be something that you wanna spell out somewhere or tell your other team members so they know. As long as their compass is working, they're gonna be able to find that degree reading that they're going to need in order to travel to those different areas. And then from base camp, again, you could take that string and stretch it to any one of those locations or any one of those trails or straight lines that you walked on and you can go directly there, very simply, very easily. Just remember that when you do this, that you put that waypoint marker up and you explore the area. There's really no reason that you need to go and bust brush and get through real heavy stuff if you, maybe you can simply walk 100 meters in one direction and then bypass all of that. And then you can use a waypoint marker to go inside there and explore, but keep your travel routes easy and simple, somewhere that is not overly burdensome for you. I hope this didn't make your head just spin all that much. Um, if you go over this a few times, you're gonna get it. It's a very simple concept. As long as you understand how to put the needle in a doghouse and what a bearing is, um, and you understand pace count, all that stuff comes together to this. And to me, this is advanced navigation at its best. It's so useful for the woodsman, and it's just another tool for the toolbox. And when you get one of those nice base camps set up somewhere, and you wanna go find out the whole area, this is such a great addition to it, and it's so much fun to do with your friends during the day. 
especially when it gets cool like now. It went from 90 yesterday to, I know you don't care about that. I'm not sweating, so it's a good day. We did some navigation, it's even a better day. So this was Dan Wallach of Cold Cracker Bushcraft. Hope you enjoyed this video as always. Check us out at coldcrackerbushcraft.com. And until next video, stay in the woods and uh, make a map.